After my last video where I showed the macros that I used for tool change and showed that it would not go through the G sender tool change code without changing the G code file to go from M0 to M6, I also stated that the macro code would not work in the tool change code. So I went back to Tech Support 101. I made sure the machine was on, I rebooted it, and I reinstalled G-Sender. And I think that was most of my problem. Somehow, when my code portion was running, it was either keeping it relative instead of absolute movements, or it was sticking with millimeters when I said inches. I don't know. I do know one of the tests that I was running to try and get it to work where I was telling it to move to was actually really close to where my first tool ended so it didn't look like it was working but it was. Um, I found that out after I reinstalled G-Sender. But there is one very important command that I added to my code in the tool change code section of G-Sender that if you get nothing else out of this I beg you to put either this command or something like it in after you probe your Z. With that I'll move on and we'll go through exactly what I did and it moves in the right spot, it probes correctly and the Z is within, I'd say about a thou. And that could be my probe. But again, when you set your Z, you can change thicknesses of your probe anyway. So that I view as, as a non-issue really. But let's get started on, on what I did, step by step. What I've done is I've copied the file that I used before over to one that says it dash M0 to M6. You can see the files are identical. Here's that line where we put in the 90 degree V bit. I'm going to change this M0 to M6. Save it. Go over here and load it. Now what I did do in the tool change section I changed it to code. Now I'm going to move to X4, Y4. That should be four inches to the right and four inches up. And I have manually jogged the machine over there, set the bit down to mark it, and then marked it with a pen to show exactly where it should go. And we'll see if it actually goes there. Uh, this down here is identical to the macro code I used before with the addition of this line right here, M0. Without that line, I will lose something. I will either lose my place, lose a bit, lose my stock, lose my mind, or lose a finger. Because it won't slow down. It will assume that you're done with the probe. It's set 0 right here. And it will continue on whether the router's on or not, whether the probe is disconnected or not. So I have changed that. But other than that, my macro was X1, Y1, and did not have this for the other macro. But now we'll see how this goes for an M6 tool change. You can see right here is the mark that I made for the 4 inch by 4 inch where that begin code should take it. And we have our M6 90 degree V bit. We'll go ahead and change this.
and it did take it right over to 4.4. Four. Now we'll set it up to probe. Remember, don't forget that magnet. Now if you can see, here's the star we did before, and here's the star we just did with the M6. And all of the commands work. Not cleaned out quite enough, but if you'll notice, it sets zero, but it's just a hair A hair too high and this could easily be changed in that set zero command and may actually be the same for the macro and under different circumstances so I don't really view that as an issue anymore this is the result of putting that M0 at the end of the code to differentiate it from the macro the good thing is you don't have to press resume other than this one place and it'll pick right back up. This is the M0 notification when you don't have the M6 running. And this is actually better for the macros because this does not stop you from being able to edit the macros or run the macros. So this is the, the first option that I showed Whereas the window that popped up saying M0, click resume to continue, that will take over everything and you can't change anything as far as macros go. So there it is, start to finish. Macros work. The M0 just causes it to pause, lets you do whatever you want, changes the macros move things around, run the macros, and then you click resume and it'll continue on from there. M6 is a change to the G code file from Carbide Create. I don't know if others might automatically put it in there, but 
you need something to pause at the end of your post tool change to give you time to get the probe disconnected and get the router started back up, dust collection hooked back up, whatever you need to do. Because when you exit that post tool change, it's moving again, ready to continue and finish the, the job. So you get that window, you cannot do anything other than stop or resume. So that's a huge difference. I like the way they both work. I do wish that G Center would put the comment in for the M0s as well as exactly the way it does for the M6 command where it shows the comment, but have it show those for both the M6, although not really necessary since that's part of the, the tool change code, but more importantly for the the window where I was running the macros in the last video. So what's my verdict? I went from knowing this much G code to knowing this much. Basically what you saw in, in the macro and in the tool change. And I'll put those up at the end. Um, they both work and it, it lets me do tool changes without having different tool paths. It's really opened up what I'm able to do. So I got a comment from Chris at CNC Labs wanting to know what was wrong. And uh, I told him, but I've got to say, other than reinstalling G Sender, user error. Uh, it is a little off. I don't know why. And I'm not talking about the 90 degree V, but it would be closer if I had a 30 degree or, you know, 15. Uh, I'm talking where there's an actual difference in, in the depth. It is off just a little bit. So reinstalling fixed everything except for that. And adding the M0 saved my sanity. So I think they're both excellent ways to do it. They both work and it's letting me go a lot farther, a lot faster. For that, I thank CNC Labs for G-Sender and the work they've put into it. Um, and there you go. I'll put up the, the code that I used. Some of it may not be necessary. It may all be necessary. I don't know. I know it works for me. If you want to modify it, if you know something that I did wrong, let me know and we'll, I'll take that under advisement. But there you go. Till next time. Here's the code. On the left is what I have for the M6 tool change. On the right is are the two separate macros. And then note the only real difference is the M0 at the bottom on the left. And that is the one line that I hope you get out of this video. If nothing else, that line will, or it did, save me. Uh, otherwise, you're running around trying to get things done before it gets back in position. Uh, macros and the locations can be wherever you want. I like keeping them the same when I'm doing multiple iterations of a part. I like keeping them out away from where I'm cutting. I didn't do that on the stars and I kind of should have because it, it cleared things up. But I hope this helps.